I'm Tom Volk for the Seattle International Auto Show. Nissan brought the affordable electric vehicle to the masses with LEAF in 2011. Its next EV effort, Aria, arrived over a decade later. Until now, all of them in the U.S. have been front-wheel drive. All-wheel drive versions will be shipping with this moniker, E-Force. Either the marketing department can't spell, or Nissan executives have a thing for algebra formulas. The plus sign means a larger battery pack, by the way. Nissan hasn't been able to pump out as many Arias as it would like because, you know, the supply chain shortage and all. So if you haven't seen one of these in person, on the outside, it's about the same size as a Rogue. But on the inside, cabin space is more like the larger Murano because, you know, electric vehicles, it's very efficient to package their powertrains. E-Force models are dual motor. All but the base and gauge model make a combined 389 horsepower and 442 pound-feet of torque. The larger lithium-ion battery delivers 87 kilowatt hours usable. Unlike LEAF, it's liquid-cooled. And as expected, it's floor-mounted for a low center of gravity. E-Force Arias can travel up to 272 miles of EPA-rated range. Time to play frunk or no frunk. Ah, oh, disappointed you can't stash your smelly gym bag in here. This is a design element that we focused on. We pushed the HVAC up front, so there is no frunk, because as far as the frunk goes, not a lot of uses for it, especially in the everyday drives. So we wanted to prioritize where customers are sitting most of the time when they're in the car for, again, that lounge-like living room experience. Fire Aria up, and this is what you get. All E-Force Arias get an excellent heads-up display that shows loads of information when driving. This is a single-speed drivetrain. Pull back twice to get into a slightly more aggressive regeneration mode. Another setting, E-Step, offers a higher level of recuperation for one-pedal driving. And to change up dynamics, there are modes to soften or sharpen the throttle response and steering effort. Max charging speed is 130 kilowatts. Aria is not nearly as fast to juice as Ionic 5, EV6, or even Volkswagen ID4. If you travel often, at home, they all take overnight. This is hardly the first EV to get a dual motor powertrain. E-Force has extra skills. As you come into a turn or exit a turn, we're able to break one side of the vehicle, keep the torque to the other side of the vehicle. This is done because we can calculate very quickly with the electric all-wheel drive system. We wanted to make sure, based on our customer feedback and focus groups, is smoothness was very important to them. So having a smooth acceleration was, was kind of the takeaway. So with our performance teams, we developed uh, the acceleration that you'll see today, which is very responsive, very exhilarating, but yet still smooth. We can minimize the pitch of the vehicle. This is very unique to Aria. Uh, typically, in a nice vehicle or a front-wheel drive vehicle, under braking or deceleration, you get kind of that forward dive. With our dual motor, we're able to pull back a little bit to kind of give it more of a flatter ride as you come down to a stop. This helps to eliminate movements that cause motion sickness in passengers. And over pavement heaves, it can smooth the ride quality. It's so unobtrusive, most will never know it's working. E-Force is a $4,000 upcharge. Pricing begins at $48,500 with the smaller 63 kilowatt hour usable pack that's good for 205 miles of rated range. I'm driving the top trim Platinum Plus. That'll set you back $61,500. That's with delivery. Nissan says the single motor Aria will do the zero to 60 dash in 7.2 seconds. The dual motor here, uh, 4.8. So if you want the quick one, you're gonna go with this. Nice and brisk, I like that. Now, if you're in sport mode, there's a performance tone. I'm not sure if you can hear this, but here goes. That's kind of cool. E-Force can vector power front to rear. It's primarily set up to deliver it evenly. There's no rear drive setting for kicking the tail out. Maybe there's an Aryan Nismo in development. This Platinum model at 5,500 pounds, some 2,500 kilos, is the heaviest Aria. Tossed hard into tight turns, there's moderate body roll. The ride quality is soothing, but controlled. 
There is a touch of sport in the driving dynamics, but Aria is pretty much set up for comfort. This would be a great road tripper. Our first stop is Sonoma Raceway, where there's a short course to show some benefits of E-Force. We're gonna roll over to the green cones, go full throttle, all the way down to the blue brake cones. And slam it on? Sure. Even with a comfy suspension. Keep going, keep going, keep going, nice. There we go. Excellent. Excellent. Body movements are managed under hard braking using rear motor regeneration. A maneuver that most people wouldn't <laughs> and shouldn't do. Full throttle around the wet corner. Yes. Okay. I know it. Let's see if it does it. Traction is excellent. The programming doesn't drain power dramatically midway through the curve. Really nice control, actually. It's fantastic control. When I jumped in on uh, setup day Sunday and did that for the first time, I'm that's, like, wait a minute, it's way better than it used to be. That's pretty much goof proof. It's very goof proof. Next, a slalom. I like to say go full throttle through here. Now, remember, you've got a GoPro hanging off back there, so. Okay, I'll try to clear the <laughs> The right. E4 system uses so, brake and active torque vectoring. Aria tracks right where the driver is pointing it. You can feel it working through there as well. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, it's fantastic. Yeah, usually you go through very nicely controlled. Usually you go through a slalom that fast, you just start to develop a bunch of understeer. Adding an extra motor drops the distance Aria can travel. Front drive models are rated as high as 304 miles. The Platinum Plus E-Force model that I'm in is officially rated at 267 miles. Obviously, driving style, topography, and temperature affect efficiency. On events like this, it's difficult to determine real world range because we just don't have much time with the vehicles. So as far as I can tell, with mostly highway driving, I'm seeing about 20 miles under the EPA rated range. Consider that my speed varied from 60 to 80 miles an hour. It was windy. Temperatures were in the high 40s to mid 50s Fahrenheit. So this is a pretty good test. A 225 mile trip should be drama free. By their very nature, electric vehicles tend to be pretty quiet. The Aria seems a little bit more hushed than usual. There's acoustic glass, extra insulation in the body panels, and the engineers made sure that there's no chattering coming from the suspension parts. That is noise that is usually masked by an internal combustion engine. The visual of the cabin keeps the chill vibe going. This is the platinum interior. The Japanese Kumiko pattern that's lighted and scattered throughout the cabin is a theme that's repeated if you look closely. On startup, these emerge from this broad panel that looks and feels like real bark. There are few buttons. These are flush mount haptic controls. The center console slides fore and aft if those up front want epic foot and legroom. And there's this hidden storage area that doubles as a small table. Nissan's zero gravity seats are second only to Volvo in comfort. Aria Platinum is the only EV in class to get Napa leather. They're vented too. All Arias get heated seats and wheel. Between E-Force and all of the cameras, this car should stay dent-free longer than most. There are two 12.3-inch displays in the single housing. Uh, notice the swerve, or that the gauge cluster screen is concave and the interface side is convex. Not all niceties are high-tech, haven't seen this in a car before. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are wireless. Aria is upgradable over the air. Remember, rogue-sized on the outside, Murano-sized on the inside. Here, head, knee, and legroom are generous. The floor is completely flat. Pockets on both seat backs, too. Plus, all E-Force Arias get heated seats in back. Adding a rear motor takes away some underfloor storage, but there's room for the supplied travel charge cord and a tire repair kit. Bag hooks and cubbies? Uh, check. This is a good amount of room, 60 cubic feet with the backs down. All seats filled, it's a respectable 23 cubes, so all passengers can take a carry-on suitcase and small bag along. Owners will probably never understand how much the E-Force system does to keep things calm and controlled. 
Nissan claims Aria production is ramping up, that there'll be more of these on the road soon. Check to see if your local Nissan dealership has one to check out. It's definitely worth a test drive. For the Seattle International Auto Show, I'm Tom Volk.